Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here, and I thought I'd be doing something a little different on this channel. For the most part, you've been watching me play games, but I thought this might be interesting to talk about the actual process of creating them. And to do that, I am going to do a walkthrough of this great tool called Twine. So what is Twine? Twine is a way to create an interactive, an interactive nonfiction story. And it's really awesome. Now, if you've never been exposed to interactive fiction, well, you're missing out. There's a whole lot of great stuff out there, and it's really fun and really accessible. In fact, if I scroll down here, you can see these are just stories that people put out that you can play for free. Now, the sound interactive fiction sounds maybe a little daunting, and Back in the day, it was. In fact, I have this tab open here called Zork and the Zork Trilogy. And if you're old, if you grew up in the 80s, you definitely encountered this. And this was the beginning of interactive fiction. You can see here, we just have this text. And we had this description of where we are, and then we have a parser. And then we basically typed in command. So you are standing in front of an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. There's a small mailbox here. So now I have to ind indicate what I want to do. So I want to say, open mailbox. And then it will say, opening the mailbox reveals a leaflet. Then I can take the leaflet. And again, I'm writing in this parser, and the parser is smart enough to understand my commands. But of course, the more complicated the puzzles and the more difficult the situations, Make it makes it difficult to know what the parser parser is expecting. So I'm going to do read leaflet, and then it says, "Welcome to Zork. Zork is a game." Blah 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 blah, and then you're off on your way. So there are lots of tools to make these style games today, and one of them is called Inform. But the problem is, is that you're working in the English language, and it really takes someone who plays these games to really understand how to craft your sentences, and so forth. And even then, you're relying on your descriptions, you're relying on your puzzles being clear enough so that the user can actually go through the process of entering this puzzle, playing it out, and having fun, and so forth. And I've been playing these types of games for years, but to tell you the truth, it's a little... It, all these games run into the same issue for me. I get far enough where I get interested and motivated, and then I have to find I hit a wall where I have to find out what the writer, what the author of this game wants me to do. And that's no fun. Then I get online, I start looking at hint books and so forth, and it just unravels from there. Twine for me is a much superior way of playing interactive fiction compared to this. Twine basically is a choose your own adventure game. So let's look at base of the comet. Let's click here and we will come down here. We'll base the comment website. So you can really have fun in terms of presentation and so forth. But you can see here, the story has begun now. It says, inside a ship, there is a room. The room has walls. There is a floor. There is a ceiling. In the corner is the still silent body of a young woman curled up with a thin blanket draped over her. Now, the story gives me options. I can choose on walls, and it has plain gray walls. Then I can click that again. The wall has plain gray walls with faint scratches in the metal. There is a floor. There's a dark, dusty floor. Now, this is a little bit different than typical Twine games. Typically, when you would click on something, and I'm guessing this is what this blue indicates, you go to another passage. And these blue indicates the passage of the forks that you can go into. So you're following along with the story, but you're also moving forward and you don't have to guess what the author wants you to do. You can just follow it along, follow the paths, and eventually the story should come to an end. And that's why I really like Twine. I think it makes it much easier to write your game and it gives your users lots of choices without having them to guess or to write or to find the correct phrasing of those choices. So let's come back to Twine itself. We'll move back over here. So this is where you can go get Twine. You can go to twinery.org, and this is an open source tool, and it's free. Now, previously, there was Twine 1.42, and this is what I did use. 
And Twine 1.42, and you can see an example of it here, was a desktop tool that you download. And this is a story I was working on. And you can see I have lots of different choices and so forth. But this was, this was written in a very cross-platform way. And I, it ran into a lot of difficulties with, excuse me, it ran into a lot of difficulties when working with on the Mac. So here's all my choices that I made. I can double click here to see, and then I could write in my choices. And you can see we have all these different, different types of coding that you can use or the Twine syntax to provide additional options, which I'll, I'll cover in later, later tutorials. And you can see here, we can go through like so. And, but I had a lot of problems working with this. As you can see, I, I made a fair amount of content with it, but it didn't follow a lot of Mac, and, Mac conventions. It was very hard on the eyes, especially on my laptop when I work on a retina, a retina screen. This was not optimized for retina, so it was really, the text was really ugly. And not to mention things like copy and paste, just things weren't intuitive. So I found myself not using this at all. It was just too hard of a process. I could have actually done this just all in pa paper and pencil and come out with my story and then converted it. But again, that's me spending too much time on my own to to sort of make up for the failings of this tool. So ultimately I decided to wait. I let them know of my issues and things went really quiet for a while. And so I figured that they were refactoring this or doing something in the background. Well, little did I realize, we'll cancel these, that they came out with an entirely new version. And what's awesome about this new version, it's designed for browsers, meaning it's it picks up a lot of those issues for free that that desktop version had. And it's great. It looks awesome on my Retina, my Retina Mac, and it's really easy to use. So let's get into Twine itself. Now, before I move forward, let me also introduce you over here to cold storage. This is the story you just saw. So here again, this is a little bit different. And previously, in my I had a background image, and somehow that's disappeared. So here again, you have your options like so, and you move through your story like this. And again, this is all done in CSS and HTML. And in your story, you can customize how you want this to look. And this sort of involves you to get it, to get knowledgeable about web development. And there are tons of courses out there and tons of video tutorials on on HTML and on CSS that you can pick up and really start putting into your actual Twine stories. I'm not going to be covering HTML and CSS. There's tons and tons of content on the web. So if you're really interested in making a nice looking story, definitely put that on your, on your task list to learn. So let's go back to Twine here. <clears throat> and now we're going to we're going to dig in. So what what you don't want to do is download version 1.42. You want to use version 202. Now I highly recommend you use this on Chrome or Firefox. I believe this should work on Internet Explorer as well, but I tend to use Safari and I've run into a lot of bugs using Safari. So that's why I'm using Chrome right now. So I'm just going to use it online. So we're just going to click this button here. And you can see now we have stories. And there is no stories saved in Twine right now. To get started, you can either create a new story or import an existing one from a file. Now, it's really important that you understand that when you save, you're saving within the browser. So when you change your stories and you're altering them and so forth, you'll be saving them into the store, the browser's local storage. So you always want to back up your stories when you're done working on them. Save them to disk. Because if there's ever a case where you're working in your browser and then what you do, say, is delete your cache, delete all your cookies and so forth, you're going to wipe out all your stories as well. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to create a new story. You can see we have the options to import a from file, archive, and various formats. So you can see this is how you want your stories to appear in, as they say, proofing formats. But I'm not going to cover these now. So let's create a new story. So we're just going to click the Story button. And we're going to give this a name. I'm just going to call this Creepy. 
and we'll add the story. And here we are, now we are in the workspace for Twine. You can see this is our untitled passage. This is the first passage here. And you can see we have a bunch of other stuff as well. So let's break this all down. Well, this is the passages, and this is the first thing that the user is, in, is going to see. Now, typically, we, now typically we're going to we're going to have to designate this to be an entry point. Ultimately, you're going to have a different a whole bunch of passages and you may want to change that. So you can see here if we mouse over this, we have a whole bunch of options. This indicates the story entry point, this rocket ship right here. So this is where we're going to have the user start off. But since this is our only passage, this is by default as the entry point. So if we come down here, you can see we have a trash can. So we're gonna, that's the delete button. This is uh, the edit button here. So if we want to edit. And this is the test story. So ultimately, you're going to be having lots of passages. And you're going to want to test various aspects of those down the, down the road. You don't want to go through your entire story just to test a very small section of it. So by clicking this little bug icon, you'll then enter the testing phase later down the road. So let's double click this. And as you can see here, we have the name of the passage, and now we have the descriptions. We also have some tags. I haven't used too much of tags, but you can certainly use them as well. So we'll just say dark road. That would be the name of, our, of this one passage. And we'll start this story like all great stories start off. It was a dark and stormy night. And we'll say, when your car died. Now I'll click outside of here, and you can see it was a dark and stormy night when your car died. Now I can come down here, and you can see I have a play button. So I'm going to hit press play, and it opens up a new tab for me here. And you can see, voila, I have my story. Now, granted, it's this is a very basic looking theme. Again, you're going to want to customize this and make it look much better through HTML and CSS. So let's come back here. So I'm going to close that here. And now we're back to my story again. So let's go down to this, this white bar here and break, break things down. You can see we have the home button. And this returns back to my story list. So I'm just going to click this home button. And you can see I have creepy. You, we can edit, we can play it, or we can delete it. I'm going to go back to editing it here. Now you can see this is the creepy story. So we have this disclosure triangle. Let's press this. Now we have a whole bunch of options. We have edit story JavaScript and edit story style sheet. Again, this is how you can, JavaScript is how you can add interactivity to it. Say you, you have a character and you want to keep track of how much health that character has. Well, you can create that health in JavaScript and as certain events happen, you can subtract to that health or add that health and check, say, if the user's health comes down to zero, then you could end the game. And likewise, you have the story style sheet as well. This will change how the story looks in browsers. We can do the change story format. So let's click this here. And you can see we have these different formats. We were using Harlow, but we have Snowman and Sugarcube to choose from. And this is just how it looks. So let's see Snowman. We're going to close this and let's press play. Not a, not a whole lot, but you can see the font is different. And we're still working on a white background. Let's come back down here again. And we can rename the story if we want to. And you can see we have Snap to Grid. Now, if I move this around, you can see how it's not really on any of the lines. So if I choose Snap to Grid, now it should snap to each of the grid icons. It should. I'm not sure why it's not. There it goes. There we are. OK. And now view proofing copy. This is useful if you have a very big story and you just want to view if all the copy to make sure say there's no misspellings or so forth, or, or if it's grammatically correct, you would print this out and you would go to this and it's going to give all of, you, all of the copy in your story so that you can review. And you can publish the file and this is how you would save this. This is where it gets a little wonky when working with Safari. I've published a file and it gets really weird results. So that's why I don't recommend using Safari. You have a quick find. So in our case, we have the road, so I can just type in road and it will show me the applicable passage. And by clicking this, this button here, we can do a find and replace. We can do passage, passage names, we can match case, and we, you can use a regular expression. A regular expression 
comes from computer programming. It's this really weird looking syntax, but it's very powerful for searching text. And these are different ways we can view our story. So let's bring this guy down here. You can see this down here. We can see just the structure of the story. In our case, our story is very small. We just have one passage. This button here will show us the titles, and this will give the titles in excerpts. This is our test button here, so we can test it. And this is the play button as well. I haven't I haven't really dived into the test features in here, so I'm not too sure what this brings to you, but I will cover that in, as I learn more about that, I will definitely dive in and relay that to this and other, other Twine discussions. And this plus passage will then add a new passage here that we can edit and add. So I'm just gonna select this, and I'm just gonna select the delete button. So we have one passage and our story isn't very good with one passage. So what I can do is I'm going to double click this here and I'm going to add another passage. So I'm just going to create a double bracket like that and I'm going to write start the car and then close bracket. Now when I select off there you can see it creates another passage with me. Another passage and it's already connected. Now if I double click here I can just put in the, the text you turn the key and the car sputters like so so here we have the making of a story so let's go and play this and you can see it was a dark and stormy night when your car died and then you can see we have start the car so we click start the car you turn the key and the car sputters not much of a story but we have stuff going on now you can see here I've added this at the bottom. You don't have to do this. You can, you can put this inside your text and Twine will parse it out and determine where that actually goes. So let's add another passage over here. We're gonna add one more passage. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna double click this here and I'm gonna double click here I'm going to add, excuse me, not double click, add these two brackets. And we, we, we're going to write, say, I can't believe this. Like this. And now, again, you've, we've created another passage. So let's play this. Now you see creepy. Start the car, you turn the car. And we get this weird, I think this is related possibly to the theme. So let's come back over here and let's switch our themes. We're gonna go back to Harlow. We'll try this again. You say, you turn the key, the car sputters. I can't believe this. I select that. And then it's asking us to double click the passage to edit it. Well, this title may not be the name of, say, say this, of this passage. This might not be a good title. We want the character to say, I can't believe this, but we may want this to be, say, something labeled a little differently. So how can we do this? Well, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this passage like so. And now you can see that was red indicating we were, I believe that we were linked and now we're not. So I'm gonna change this here. I'm gonna put a pipe here. And now I'm just gonna type unbelieving. So the link is going to say, I can't believe this. And it's going to go to the unbelieving passage. So here we have the unbelieving passage like so. And we can say, you stare at the dashboard. Unbelieving, like so. I think that's spelled reject. I'm not too sure. So we have that like so. So now we have what is a very simple story. But let's say we want this to come over here. Well, we can do this also. Um, this was start the car. And then we could say, um, we'll just call this unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then we can just come here and put our pipe and we'll put the name of the passage, unbelieving, like so. Whoops, 
misspelled it. I believe this is misspelled, so excuse me for my terrible misspelling. Whoa, okay, let's come back here and we will delete this. Let's edit this and like so. Okay, I'm not too sure exactly what was going on there, but you can see now that we have this connected. So we have unbelievable, and we're connecting it to the unbelieving passage. And now you can see we have the basis of choice coming here. Well, this choice doesn't necessarily do anything, but you may want to actually break this down and to have even more choices and so forth. So that's the basics of creating a very simple twine story. So I highly suggest you just come over here come to twine, twinery.org and then start playing around because that's really the best way for you to start learning how to use twine. Okay, so we have this completely done. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to get we want to save our story. So we can come down here and we can choose publish to file. And we can see here we're just going to call this creepy.html and you can see now it saved it. Now what this means is now we can ultimately load it again in Twine and make some changes. Now, again, Twine will save this in your local browser cache, but I highly suggest you just work with files. When you're done working with it, save it to a file, and when you're ready to work with it again, upload it back to Twine. And the other thing to keep in mind, too, is that when you're uploading to Twine, it's not touching their servers. You're actually just importing it into your browser. Your browser is then processing that file, but that none of your data is being transmitted to Twine. So that we have that. Now if we want to actually load our file, let's go to another browser. I'm gonna to go to Opera here, and you can see I already have it set up. I'm just gonna use, use it online. And now you can see we have no stories here. We want no thanks, we have no stories. So I'm just gonna choose import from file. I'm gonna choose my file. I'm gonna say creepy.html. I'll select open. You can see the story was imported. And now I can click on this edit, and now I have my story here. Here's this unbelieving passage that I was using as a test. Oftentimes, I, I want to hit the delete when working with Twine. That will send you back, and you've already seen me do that a couple times. Instead, you have to use this trash can right here. And that's working with Twine. That's the very beginning, and have a lot of fun, and, and let, me know your, let me see your stories when you make them.